Hello guys and girls, I shall be doing something a little different today. I shall be talking about the differences between AMD and Nvidia and where your hard earned money or savings should be going and what you should be buying. Some of you might be first time buyers in the PC market and with the PC gaming market now worth 26 billion as of last year, it's superseded the console game sales. So definitely PC gaming is looking brighter for the future. This video is more about advisory on what is what and uh, you can decide at the end of it where your money goes. For some of the older hands of course uh, you'll probably already know most of what I'm talking about but there's a few new guys who won't really know and wouldn't mind a bit of advice so I should do my best to try and cover all the basics about buying a GPU from AMD or Nvidia. One of the first things I ever notice on forums when new guys ask about what should I be buying AMD or Nvidia is drivers gets mentioned quite a bit and historically ATI back in the day before AMD bought them they didn't have a great name uh, in the early part of AMD's GPU years they didn't have a great name but as times have gone on things have uh, tightened up a little bit uh, both vendors do a great job really if uh, you're just running single card single monitor there's no real complaints and everything basically works you might get the odd bug in a driver but both of them are pretty much on the ball and soon get on top of it with drivers moving on quickly both Nvidia and AMD have added additions there's things like Shadow Play and Game GVR Shadow Play is Nvidia's recording software so you can record your gameplay upload it to YouTube live stream straight on Twitch or YouTube and Game GVR uh, records your gameplay both do a great job uh, Game GVR I feel gives a slightly better image uh, in my experiences the picture was slightly better and Nvidia's does a better job it can record 4k at 60 frames per second whereas GVR is only limited to 1080p 60 frames per second so there's pluses and minuses there for either there's also uh, upscaling uh, where if you've got a 1080p monitor you can make it a 4k image it's not literal it just compresses the image so if you've got jagged edges you can uh, get rid of those but it does require a bit more grunt from the GPU and both do this uh, for AMD it's called VSR and for Nvidia it's called DSR both are optional installs you don't have to have them if you don't want them uh, so it's your choice if you have them if you want to record your gameplay go for it if not don't bother so to summarize with drivers uh, if you just want a game there's nothing in between the two of them if you like a bit of recording a uh, bit of uh, high resolution on your monitor uh, they both got pluses and minuses there so you decide what way you want to go there Right, moving on, we'll start with G-Sync versus FreeSync. Right, so you understand your drivers a bit better now, and you're ready to go and buy a monitor to go with your nice GPU, and you see there's G-Sync, FreeSync, or just standard monitors. So you're wondering, what on earth do I go for? Well, G-Sync only works with Nvidia, and FreeSync only works with AMD. So you're sort of tied in between the two. Basically, there are uh, variable refresh monitors uh, they output whatever your GPU outputs up to X amount of frames uh, in my case I've got a ROG Swift monitor it outputs uh, up to 144 frames per second and whilst it's doing that it keeps it all nice and smooth and stutter free the basics of uh, G and FreeSync are you get in the olden days you used to get tearing in games uh, as gamers we blocked it out but you could still see it now and again and, and it was off-putting something I never liked but I accepted it it was no other choices so you get on with it in September of 2014 Nvidia came out with the first G-Sync monitor uh, I jumped on shortly after and bought the uh, 2560 by 1440 ROG Swift and it was a complete game changer it was so smooth everything ran perfectly and it it solved me on the tech you know, I, th I thought I was uh, not really going to notice, but I did. And especially when 
I stopped using G-Sync for a, a couple of weeks. It really did stand out what we have to put up with as gamers. So G-Sync and V-Sync with our variable refresh are real pluses for buying a monitor and something I would definitely advise anyone to look into. The only problem is, as I say, it's proprietary. Now Nvidia had no choice other than to put a scaler in the monitor because there wasn't the hardware on the GPU and AMD soon uh, realised what was going on, realised that their own GPUs could actually do it via the GPU and uh, they asked VESA to make it a standard which uh, has been done, it was about a year after but uh, yeah both, both can do this. G-Sync does come in uh, slightly dearer than uh, FreeSync purely because the, the scale is not cheap obviously uh, the cost has to be accounted for somewhere so uh, again uh, you need to look into this if you're down at 25 frames per second as well G-Sync uh, works all the way there it works all the way down at 1 frames per second whereas FreeSync stops working at whatever the monitor's refresh rate is the lowest so it could be between uh, let's say 40 frames per second and uh, 75 I've seen in some cases or even 48 and 75 so just be aware of that uh, make sure you take all of that on board before deciding to buy your monitor not a full in-depth explanation there but I want to keep this quite brief so uh, look into it a bit further if you want to know more okay that was a brief explanation there like I say if you want to know more look a look on forums and websites and uh, read up on it righto let's move on to prices now at the top end of nvidia scale you've got the titan x which is uh, a lot of money it comes with 12 gigabytes of vram which is totally unnecessary uh, you've got the 980 ti under that and that comes in at around uh, 550 pounds so not too badly priced there it's still a lot of money of course but that's your top end card and that's only for your hardcore benches gamers who could afford that on the amd side you've got the fury x uh, fantastic card comes in roughly the same price maybe slightly less than the 980 ti now but fantastic card comes with hbm memory high bandwidth memory which is roughly 60 percent faster than 512 bit ddr5 memory which you get on the 980 ti so it's better for high resolutions the 4 gigabytes of HBM was never an issue for me uh, people say about running out of VRAM but at 1440p the only game I ever ran out of VRAM was uh, Call of Duty Advanced Warfare but that wasn't a biggie just turned down the AA a little bit and it ran fine so yeah you've got the 980 Ti versus the Fury X at the top end of the scale both those cards are suited for 1440p gaming in my opinion they both do a fantastic job, can cope pretty much with any and every game going. So yeah, if you've got a 2560 by 1440p monitor, that's really where you want to be looking if you want all the settings up. Next up you have the 980 versus the Fury. The GTX 980 from Nvidia versus AMD's Fury. Again, the Fury comes with 4GB of HBM memory, while the 980 comes with 4GB of 256-bit GDDR5. Now b both perform well but the Fury edges this by uh, a, a bit, uh, favours the Fury in most of the games so yeah, I've, I've checked so yeah if you're looking at that end of the scale my money would go for the Fury and both will excel at 1080p and you'd have to turn the odd setting down at 1440p but yeah uh, brilliant car for 1080p and perfect for 1440p if you're quite happy to turn the odd setting down turn the anti-aliasing down anti-aliasing next up we have the GTX 970 versus the 390 390X if you like I'll put them two in the same category uh, both of them slightly faster the 390X obviously uh, slightly faster than the 390 still but very good price there uh, all three of them great cards I've had a 290X and a 970 both performed fantastically especially at 1080p I could run pretty much with everything turned up well I could run with everything turned up at, at 1080p and no issues at all I feel the 390X is a bit of a redundant card it doesn't really have a place in the market but the 390 does at its price it's a great competitor to the 
the 970 and slightly cheaper so not a bad card there at all I should also mention that the 390 comes with 8 gigabytes of uh, GDDR5 512 bit memory which is a, a real nice card if you want to add another one so you go crossfire and in games which it's supported you can get almost double your frames sometimes double your frames so worth mentioning that uh, whereas the 970 only comes with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 which is running at 256 bit so not an ideal card for SLI generally if you're going to SLI you're going for high resolutions and 4 gigabytes pushing it a little bit at the bigger reses nowadays so uh, just be aware of that 390 big plus there 970 not so much same as the 980 and finally we go to the uh, GTX 960 versus AMD's 380 both good cards uh, the 380 edges it again for me because it's slightly faster the 960 runs a little bit cooler so it's uh, slightly better there but that's never really a major issue but yeah both the entry level cards I'd consider both cheapest chips and ideal for 1080p and if you don't mind turning the odd setting down go for one of those either one of those will do you well if you're looking to game at Ultra HD uh, 4k you really want to be looking at 6 gigabytes plus so uh, the 980 Ti and ideally two of them at a minimum so 980 Ti I'm not a fan of the Fury X uh, for that resolution because I don't feel the 4 gigabytes is enough uh, maybe someone's going to tell me I'm wrong I never got to try it at 4k so I can't really answer that but for me uh, yeah 6 gigabytes plus if you're looking at 4k or even higher 5k so I think I've explained about the different vendor techs I've probably missed a few bits out but uh, just trying to keep it a little bit shorter you can decide what GPU you go for really you set your budget out neither are going to do you any harm as I say for a single card and a single monitor uh, gaming so yeah set your budget out and go for what you like don't forget about your game works and certain effects not working on on AMD cards but uh, on the whole most of them do work so you can't go wrong with either AMD or Nvidia anyway thanks for watching appreciate your time and I hope you enjoyed this uh, short GPU comparison and uh, see you next time bye for now